Okay guys, so I'm going to talk to you about two main autoimmune diseases in dogs. Um, this topic is very near and dear to my heart because when I was a freshman in high school, I actually was diagnosed with Crohn's disease and I've been in and out of the hospital since. And so I was wondering if this actually happened with dogs because of the just the things that I had to go through. I couldn't imagine someone actually having to do this for their pet and it actually does happen. So, um, an autoimmune disease, what that actually means is that for some reason, um, which they still don't even know the cause of it, is your cells for some reason will see the cells in a certain area, so it depends on the disease that you have, but it'll see that your cells are foreign and just start attacking it. So pretty much your body is attacking yourself from the inside out. Um, and so because of this, it doesn't suppress your immune system because your immune system is actually thinking it's fighting something else and when you're actually, it should be fighting anything, so you're more prone to be getting infections, stuff like that, um, just because your immune system is kind of just working in overdrive because it doesn't understand um, what's non-foreign and what, you know, is self-bodies. So, um, they have thought that it can be genetic um, with people and with humans, but again, they really don't know. Um, we talked about, if you guys took micro, he talked about it, about autoimmune diseases, stuff like that. Um, so the one bad thing is that people and animals, they don't usually die from the actual disease. They actually die from complications from what the disease has caused. So like infections, stuff like that. Secondary factors yes. that play out. Yes. So um, the first autoimmune disease I'm going to talk about um, is generally known as lupus in people. For dogs, it's just systemic lupus erythromatosis, so SLC, SLE, sorry about that. So um, this is where the body actually attacks your DNA directly. So it, um, so when your DNA is copying and everything, it starts actually attacking that process. And so you're having mutation after mutation because it's not allowing your DNA to fully um, replicate. Um, and because of this, you're going to have, <laughs> it's going to be directly causing your organs um, just to start failing. You're going to have so much damage that they're just going to start failing. So um, symptoms that come with lupus, so with people, you know, you have like the butterfly rash, lethargy, stuff like that. Um, with dogs, you have the lethargy, uh, loss of appetite, which is known as anorexia. They'll have usually a fever. Um, it does break down the joints, um, so the synovial membranes, so that soft tissue lining in your joints, they break that down, so they're going to have swollen and painful joints. Um, instead of the butterfly lash, they have skin lesions, and because your immune system is fighting off something else, it takes a really long time for those lesions to heal, which is another prone way of having infections because you have this open wound that is not going to be healing. Um, so they can conclude this by just doing a CBC full panel, and they're going to be seeing that um, your kidney, liver enzymes are going to be completely elevated, um, your white blood cell count is going to be through the roof, stuff like that. Unfortunately, with this, it's kind of trial and error um, because seeing elevated kidney enzymes and liver enzymes are going to think, oh, kidney disease, liver disease. So when they start treating for that and nothing's happening, that's when they start thinking, oh, well, it's probably going to be lupus because everything that we're doing otherwise is not affecting and helping. So. Okay, now before you go on, yes. I know in the human population, yes. For every man that has lupus, there are 10 women. It's a yes. 1 to 10 ratio. Yes, it's very common in people. It's very rare in dogs. So what I came to see is that autoimmune diseases I've known are coming more popular in humans, but it's actually, too, becoming more popular in dogs. You, I mean, I didn't know anything. When I was diagnosed with Crohn's disease, I didn't know what that was. I was like, what are you talking about? So it is becoming more. Uh, they don't have that much. To statistics with it yet, but it is growing. Mm -hmm. um, so I'll talk about treatments after I go over the next one. So the next one, um, I'm going to talk about dogs also really do get Crohn's disease as well, but they usually call it IBD, which is irritable bowel disease. Um, so it's an inflammation of the bowel um, that generally affects the ileum, so that's the part of the small intestine, that's the last part, and then or it'll affect the ascending colon, which is the first part of your colon. Um, so symptoms are going to be moderate to severe abdominal pain, they're going to have excessive weight loss, um, mouth sores, fistulas on the rectum, ulcers in the stomach and intestines, um, joint pain, and anemia. Um, so diagnosis for this is usually a colonoscopy, 
We also read about the capsule endoscopies. Those are very common in people. They're not that very common in animals yet, but I'm hoping that they will. Um, but I'll talk to you about why for animals there's not that much research and stuff going into it, which I thought was kind of saddening. Well, it's, it, it all, the animal stuff always lags human it's, stuff, but it's, it's always coming scar along. It's scary, and I'm definitely going to talk about it. Um, so for... There's not a lot of things that you can show for lupus because it's more of like joint pain, lethargy, weight loss. There's not a lot of, I mean, you can show like the skin lesions. Everyone knows what skin lesions look like, right? Just open sores on the skin. Um, but for Crohn's disease, so you have, or the IBD, these are the mouth sores. Um, so they'll have just a bunch of them and they will not go. I mean, it's very hard for them to go away. And so one, that's the dog's already having abdomen pain, but it's also having mouth pain because of everything that's going on and then this is an affected colon with the dog with Crohn's disease all these little so colon should be a smooth um, pink tube it should have those little yes it should circle one of those right it doesn't have that as those good. that's longitudinal ridges yeah and stuff. that is one ulcer yeah so that dog has hundreds Look and hundreds of ulcers you can you imagine something going through yeah. that how much pain I mean, and because of, the, of these ulcers and the stomach fluid and stuff like that, it gets down to where it's like acid on skin because you only have the one lining because it's just so much damage to the dog's intestinal tract that, you know, there's nothing. I mean, would you guys want to eat with yeah. that, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, so, Crazy. oh, what did I do? Okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> so treatments for humans, there are a bunch of different treatments. Unfortunately, there is no cure for autoimmune diseases, so lupus and Crohn's, there is no cure for people and for animals. Um, so for humans, they just try to slow down the process, so they'll use like biologics, which I'll talk about here in the next slide. Um, what I was really upset with is for animals, they only use medications to treat the symptoms. So this kind of really put it in perspective for me. Um, a couple weeks ago, I worked at Purdue as a receptionist in the vet school, and um, this German Shepherd came in. It was about a four-year-old German Shepherd that has Crohn's disease. And um, the dog just gets to a point where you have flares, where you try to get to remission, where you have just no symptoms, but you still have the disease. And the dog had just relapsed from its remission, and so it had a really big flare, and it had to be hospitalized for about a week and a half. To hospitalize a dog here at Purdue a week and a half with Crohn's disease cost the lady $12,000. This is because they do not have biologics and the medications that we have as humans for these animals. And this woman spent $12,000. And just from personal experience, for me, not, I'm not a dog, but I have a flare probably once a month. So can you imagine if this dog has a flare once a month mm -hmm. and they spend $12,000 to keep this dog comfortable? And so it's kind of ridiculous and it makes me really upset because I felt so bad for that dog because I, I mean, I, I know how I feel and I can't say that I'm going to feel the same way as the dog, but I can't imagine how that dog is because that dog doesn't have the things that I have been able to have. So um, the reason I found that they haven't done any research and stuff like that is because um, drug companies, we kind of all know this, there's not that many cases right now. And so the drug companies think, well, I'm not going to make that much money, so why put in the money and research for these animals when you only have, you know, a couple cases per month, stuff like that. So, and it makes you really mad because this is just seven of the biologics and medications that they have for people for autoimmune diseases. There are hundreds, okay, because there's a lot of things that don't work. So a lot of these, they're TNF blockers, and sometimes your body will act differently to that, and so they have to try a different biologic. Um, they have all of these, and with the programs and stuff, they're fairly cheap, like, with programs. Remicade, if you don't have insurance and you're a person, $14,000 for that tube right there. That bottle and you, right Yes, there? and you have to get an IV treatment every four to six weeks. Wow. Okay? Without insurance, $14,000. The Humira pin, the same way. But they do have programs like Remy Start, Humira Start, stuff like that to where I only pay $5 and I inject myself <coughs> every two weeks. Okay? 
So it's possible, I mean, and there's so many different things that they could try and just research and see because things that work for animals, I mean, that work for people could work for animals as well. I mean, we see it all the time that we use the same medications and stuff like that. So it was very upsetting to me to see that, you know, this woman with her dog, she loves her dog. The dog's only four. Yeah, that's. A, I mean, it'd be different if the dog was like 12. 12. The dog's four. Yeah. And they keep having to try to change foods because the dog just won't eat because it's in so much pain mm -hmm. and it's lost so much weight. Mm -hmm. So, it's yeah. It's a tough, tough deal. Yeah. Is there any questions? Sarah? Yeah, for like the Humira pen and stuff like that, like all this is FDA approved and it has to go through animal testing before it can go into human testing. So if it's already been through animal testing, yeah. I don't understand why they're Because not. it's only been animal tested for the side effects. It hasn't been animal tested right. for actually the treatment of the disease. Right. So that's why. Okay. And a lot of times they do cell cultures too yes. and stuff. So it's technically not been animal tested, okay. like you would say. Yes. I mean, they do. They usually just do the animal testing to see the side effects. That's the first part, and then they'll go towards the human aspect of it. Yeah. So that's that's a big thing. These drug companies. Here's what a drug company knows: if they advertise a billion dollars on TV, listen to this. This has been proven. And you, see, you look at, watch TV, right? How many drugs are advertised? How many? I mean, Holy smoke. That one's on TV all yeah, the time. Yeah, yeah. So here's that the, here's, one's on TV all if, the time. If you're a drug company, it's a money-making proposition. If you put a billion dollars in advertising, you know how much product you sell? Two billion. Who wouldn't pour money in? And it doesn't you give me ten dollars and I'll give you twenty? Exactly. And it doesn't, I, I look to see how much it costs to make this. It costs less than a dollar to make this. But now the background And they charge fourteen thousand. They did a lot of years of study to yes. get there. So yeah. They did. But, but still, I see this but still, yeah, but still yeah, when yeah. they make it in front of me before when I was on Remicade, they made it in front of me and literally that's like a gold vial sitting yeah. in front of me that yeah. thirteen thousand nine hundred. Exactly. And that's because, and, and thank goodness that my mother has really good insurance because I would be screwed. Okay. <laughs> screwed. So yes. Is there any other questions? Other questions, comments? But you make a good point. Yeah, there's. It's not approved for dogs, and you you have to be.